This is a six-part video series that will be your primer into Buddhist Taoist esotericism, and you are watching video number one. Basically, I am inviting you to learn more about the occult traditions I practice. I'll be approaching this lecture series as a graduate level seminar, more like something you might find in academia. I hope anyone from any background interested in the topic can get something out of this lecture, but I want to take a moment here at the beginning to address those like myself, who look like me. Those of us who are part of the Chinese and Taiwanese diaspora, it can be a struggle to connect with your heritage and roots. I hope over the course of this lecture, I can begin to foster in you what took me a very long time to do for myself, and that is to gain a profound depth of pride for my heritage, where I come from, and more important, who I come from. We are the descendants of the dragon. Oh yeah, fun fact, the Chinese and Chinese diaspora, we call ourselves the descendants of the dragon. What's the deal with the dragon? According to our mythology, Huang Di, the Yellow Emperor, is the father of the Chinese civilization. When the country was embattled in a great war, the Yellow Emperor called upon the gods of heaven for help, and heaven sent Zhou Tianxuanyi, the Lady of the Ninth Heaven, to give him a hand. She taught him the art of war and the art of magic. From her, the Emperor learned how to transform himself into a golden dragon. Again, mythology. Since he's a dragon and he's the father of the Chinese civilization and we're Chinese, his scions, we call ourselves the descendants of the dragon, Long Zhuanren. The narrative of the Yellow Emperor, while by most accounts is a historic figure, is nevertheless steeped in mythology and magic, with many accounts of beasts, demons, patron gods, and spirits helping the Yellow Emperor, and descriptions of war and battles that involve equal parts military strategy and shamanism. According to mythology, Sangxie, who was said to have lived around 2650 BC, saw the footprints of birds, and from that was inspired to invent writing. If you look at relics of the first form of Chinese writing, or Chinese oracle bone script, it does resemble the footprints of birds. Also, according to myth, when Sangxie invented writing, the demons in hell shook with fear. Why would they shake in fear from the invention of writing? Well, the ancient Chinese believed writing to be magical. Writing is how humans can communicate with heaven. Words were believed to be magical, and this belief isn't unique to the Chinese. It's part of the Western consciousness as well. In 1916, Sigmund Freud said, words and magic were, in the beginning, one and the same thing. Words retain magical power. Also, why was that earliest form of writing called oracle bone script? Because the earliest records of Chinese writing we have today were found on oracle bones, which were used by Neolithic shamans for divination and prophecy. The history of how Chinese writing came to be relates to magic. But we'll get into history a little later in this lecture series. Now let's start at the beginning. Chinese occultism is, in short, a syncretic practice of esoteric Buddhism and esoteric Taoism, and now we're going to cover the legacy, the religion, and the sorcery. In this video installment, we'll address what I mean when I say Taoism. This introduction will offer a framework for the rest of the lecture series. Then the video after this one will be a history lesson for you on Taoism and Buddhism in China. Then let's address the cultural practice of Taoist sorcery. What does Taoist magic actually look like? The science and metaphysics behind Taoist magic is complex, involved, and requires a great deal of discipline and dedication. Let's talk Taoist metaphysics. It's next to impossible to talk about any so-called pure form of Chinese occultism. In fact, the very nature of esoteric Taoism is syncretic, so we'll discuss what that means. The final video lecture in the series will address contemporary practices of Taoist magical traditions. First, an introduction to the subject. Taoism is a religion and spiritual philosophy premised on the Tao. Tao means the way, the path. It also means the teachings. Taoism emphasizes the importance of the journey. Not only are the experiences along your journey formative, but the very path you choose to take will be formative. Implied in the very root of Taoist thought is a presumption that there is no one defined or definitive path, no single way, no one size fits all when it comes to a philosophical school of thought or to religious subscription. Taoism presumes that many paths are equally valid. 
at the heart of a definition for Tao is knowledge and the transmission of knowledge. Taoism ascribes how we come to acquire knowledge and how we transmit that knowledge to others. In that sense, Taoism is about epistemology. Epistemology is the investigation of how we come to acquire knowledge, the origins and sources of our knowledge, and the very nature of that knowledge. There are two driving political forces that affect Chinese occultism and how it has evolved into the modern era, and that's one, imperialism, along with Christian evangelism across Asia, and two, the Cultural Revolution. The first is imperialism. From Christian evangelism in China, documented as early as the 6th century AD to the Opium Wars, the first Opium War occurring between 1839 and 1842, and the second Opium War between 1856 and 1860, Western thought indelibly modified Eastern thought and culture. Subconsciously, tragically, the native Chinese came to adopt attitudes, opinions, and views of their own culture and religious practices that mirrored the Europeans. That's the natural symptom of post-colonialism, and as much as this isn't a political lecture, Chinese occultism has been marred by political forces. Orientalism pushed interpretation of Taoism and Buddhism through the framework of Christianity and Western thought. The second political force to impact Chinese occultism is the Cultural Revolution, which took place roughly from 1966 to 1976. There was a great purge of all antiquated Chinese traditions. All forms of native religion, shamanic practices, and occultism was seen as backward, superstitious, and to be reviled. Anyone who practiced the old religions were condemned. Family grimoires were burned unless those families were fortunate and wealthy enough to smuggle them out of China. Lineage masters died without ever passing on their school's traditions to students. And so the tradition died with the last lineage master. I got a little ahead of myself there. We'll revisit this when we talk about history in video number two. Now, I think we need to make the distinction between exoteric schools of Taoism and esoteric schools. Exoteric Taoism, which is probably what you think of as entirely Taoism, is focused more on a philosophy of life. It's about how you can live in harmony with the natural forces. You live in submission to nature. You make peace with whatever comes your way. You are the yin. Nature and fate are the yang. Esoteric Taoism is in part religious Taoism, but it goes further than that. It's about a metaphysical science and technology to control natural forces. It's about living autonomously and in control of natural forces. You are the yang. Let nature and fate be the yin. Both are considered Taoism, and yet there is a notable tension between exoteric philosophical Taoism and esoteric religious and mystical Taoism. You see this dichotomous tension play out between exoteric Buddhism and esoteric Buddhism as well. In the next video of this series, I'll be giving you a history lesson, but an occult one, in which we discuss esoteric Taoism and Buddhism through the dynasties of China. If you want to stay tuned, hit that subscribe button.